Our first stop is the German Research Center for Geosciences in Potsdam, located on the Telegrafenberg, in a historic science campus surrounded by forest. At the GFZ, scientists study the dynamics of planet Earth, not just the solid Earth and the surface on which we live, but also the hydrosphere, atmosphere, and biosphere, and the chemical, physical, and biological processes that connect them. Among others, Earth observation is a key technique for understanding the Earth, and it has a long tradition here on Telegrafenberg. Besides the GFZ, there are other research centers here on campus, such as the Alfred Wegener Institute for Polar and Marine Research, and the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research, as well as historic buildings like the famous Einstein Tower. For our first expert interview, we will meet very close to the Einstein Tower. I'm a specialist in hyperspectral remote sensing and have been working in this field for the past 25 years now. And especially I'm a specialist in soil spectroscopy and digital soil mapping. And we are part of a section of remote sensing and geoinformatics and we are actually pioneers in the field. We have been working on advanced uh, optical remote sensing, uh, sensor definition and also new methodologies for the past 25 years now. And nowadays we are one of the key players internationally. So in 2003, this is our section under the lead of uh, Charlie Kaufman, who was the head of the section at that time. We proposed there was a DLR announcement of opportunity for uh, German national missions. And we are the ones who proposed the hyperspectral satellite. And this mission is now funded. So uh, nowadays we are the head of a science segment of a satellite. We are coordinating the NMAP Science and Advisory Group. We are coordinating the NMAP PI project, which is a project to support uh, science development and algorithms uh, developments for the um, exploitation of NMAP data. So this is a national consortium with four partners in Germany. So in the phase from 20 to 23, we are covering the, the pre-launch phase, the commissioning phase and the start of a nominal phase. And is focusing on the mission preparation for the exploitation of the data and uh, support to uh, DLR. In particular, some focus in this current phase are the development also of educational tools like the HyperEDU platform, uh, some flight campaigns and some algorithms development in the NMAP box. Another area of development is uh, free and open um, data and free and open uh, softwares. So the NMAP data will be offered for free for the user community and soft softwares are available for free also. Right now, in the context of uh, big uh, climatic and anthropogenic uh, changes, with uh, lots of soil degradation, and hyperspectral remote sensing technique is something that can really help in uh, uh, characterizing, on uh, in terms of quantifications, the composition of the soils. Spaceborne uh, hyperspectral remote sensing is very uh, interesting because it's a difference of field or laboratory data that are available only in a test case study. And also field and laboratory data are very costly. You need to uh, organize a team going there. Uh, it takes time, it takes lots of instruments. So the spaceborne um, allow to uh, have a repetition of acquisition of the data. And uh, so you can do also monitoring of uh, Earth surface processes and mapping some um, uh, changes at the surface linked to anthropogenic and climate changes. So the advantage of a hyperspectral remote sensing technique compared to multispectral um, is that we have access to those diagnostic signal that is really um, characteristics of the minerals of the surface. For example, we can directly from the looking at the physical signals received by the satellite, we can directly identify is this a calcite, is it iron, is it clay, is there some organic carbon content. So all these are really diagnostic from the signal, and this is something that only the hyperspectral technique can provide. Yeah, for example, we had a very nice demonstration um, scientific work that was based in southern Spain, so in the Cabo de Cata Natural Park. Um, there's an agricultural area, it's an iron-rich soil, and in this area, thanks to hyperspectral remote sensing, we were able to simulate uh, upcoming in-map uh, images. And we could also simulate uh, upcoming NMAP products in terms of uh, iron oxide uh, content map and also clay content map, which is very nice because it delineates the areas with more soil moisture and more fertility. And in another um, uh, science study, we are working in the Terreno 
uh, long-term observatory in uh, northern Germany, so the name of the test area is Demin. And in this area, we have a very high variability in organic carbon uh, at, the top source, at the surface of the source. And in this area, we were able to uh, simulate and map imagery also, and to develop new tools uh, and to map soil organic carbon content at the surface. So in another science issue, we uh, looked at the impact of hyperspectral remote sensing to map uh, raw materials at the surface and in the mining environment. So this is a study that uh, in the test sites in uh, Namibia and um, northern South Africa, and there we were able to do a very nice uh, simulation of a map product uh, with uh, identifying the different uh, geological minerals. So this is really a very nice study because it shows that in uh, such an uh, arid environment and also it's an area, it's a very rugged terrain where normally for geologists it's very hard to access, uh, you can uh, develop such products. So the range of users is endless, includes uh, NGOs, uh, governmental uh, institutions, public authorities, individual um, farmers, like individual people. So the user groups are very um, endless and very wide. Current challenges now are in the exploitation of the data because there are still some methodology that involves big data, um, data science, uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence that are now uh, in uh, full development. And those new methods uh, will be very useful to extract the complexity inside the hyperspectral data. An important avenue and development and current challenge now is that the community is still not trained uh, to use or, or to know the potential of this data. And we have to develop big educational program such as uh, the MOOC here or such as HyperEDU and there are such educational programs also internationally that are in development so that the users really learned uh, how useful is the data and how they can process it uh, 